All right, so I want you to think back to the last sunset that you saw and to remember the feelings that it evoked. Well, there are now non-living entities that are also capable of recognizing sunsets. Take my cell phone as an example. It's a Google phone, and if I go to the Google Images app and search for sunsets, it will bring up exactly the images that I've taken of sunsets. So the big question is, even though cell phones are now capable of recognizing sunsets, do you think that they're able to actually experience a sunset? to savor its beauty? Most people, including me, would say no. And so the fact that we are able to experience sunsets while our cell phones are not means that we have consciousness, but our cell phones do not, okay? And so, um, as a scientist, the big question that you know, I want to answer is where does consciousness come from in the first place? Right? If you think about your cell phone, it has a bunch of transistors that are switching on and off, but that doesn't produce consciousness. So why is it that in the human brain, where you have a bunch of neurons firing on and off, that that does produce consciousness? Well, the answer is, we basically have no idea. <laughs> but scientists are working very hard on this, and I want to give you one example of how. So one e example is this binocular rivalry experiment. In this experiment, you project two completely different images to the two eyes of a test subject. And we can do this right now. So go ahead and put on the glasses. And you should find that when you look at this uh, PowerPoint slide, that your conscious experience is going to switch back and forth between these two different words. What's happening is that your glasses are filtering the light so that the word blue is only projected to one eye and the word red is only projected to the other eye. Is it working? Yeah. Okay. So, um, well, one of the, the, the really weird thing about this is that your conscious experience is continually shifting even though the light that's entering your eyes is staying exactly the same. Okay. So you can go ahead and take the glasses off now. Now, one of the main questions that neuroscientists want to answer is, what is it that changes inside the brain when your conscious experience changes? And we can answer this question by running this same experiment with monkeys and training them to pull a lever whenever their conscious experience changes. And then we can record the neural activity from various different parts of their brain. And when we've done that, we found that there is one particular brain region, the only one that we know of, where the brain activity changes in lockstep with the conscious experience. Okay? And, it, oh, that's, that was too soon. That's coming. <laughs> so, um, we, we, we've found this one brain region connected with consciousness. But we don't really know why that brain region is so special. And more generally, many neuroscientists are conducting experiments where they're just simply cataloging the connection between brain activity and consciousness. And so admittedly, that really doesn't bring us very close to answering the big question of where consciousness comes from in the first place. You could say that we're in the position of these medieval peasants who've been given a TV and told to figure out how it works. So far, we've only fiddled with the knobs. But to me, it's exciting to think that even with all that scientists have discovered, there are still these massive mysteries that remain. So while we work hard to solve this mystery, I'm gonna make sure that I take some time out, that I go find a sunset, and simply enjoy my consciousness. And I hope that you'll do the same.